My name is Olivia Dexter, and for our legislature's presentation, Jake, Emily, and I decided to focus on changing the process of passing amendments under the U.S. Constitution by practically replicating the process of the Texas Constitution, which is a much more simple process in order to ratify an amendment. And both of these constitutions have many similarities, um, such as they both provide a Bill of Rights, a le legislature with both a House of Representatives and a Senate, they both provide a system of checks and balances and a separation of powers, et cetera. However, they both are very different based on um, the purpose behind them and why they were formed. The US Constitution was made to um, practically bring more power to the government after the Articles of Confederation were found to be weak, while the Texas Constitution was formed in order to um, decentralize that power and enable too much um, government action and power. And this change would be so important because it would overall just facilitate the amending process of the U.S. Constitution, which has only been amended 27 times, 10 of those being the Bill of Rights, Bill of Rights which um, were included in the founding document, versus the Texas Constitution, which has been amended um, just over 500 times. And we see this large difference because of the process in which it takes to um, ratify amendments. Along with the lengthy process of the US Constitution, they must have 75% of states popular vote in order to ratify an amendment, which can still be vetoed versus the Texas Constitution, which simply requires a majority of voters um, approval to ratify an amendment, which once it has that popular vote, it cannot be vetoed by the governor. Effects on Congress. Because of the ease to pass and ratify new amendments, this will likely influence Congress to try and pass more amendments. Yet this is Congress's job and what the people want. With this extra motivation to create new amendments, this can cause Congress's job approval to go up if the amendments are good and create new opportunity for things to get gun done in the government and in the US Constitution. It is difficult for things to get done with polarization and gridlock in Congress. Yet the fact that the amendments would be easier to pass and ratify, this could hopefully cause more compromise because Congress should want to get things done. Compromise is great. And with the higher likelihood of ratification, the new amendments process may force compromise as both parties and individuals within the parties and in Congress want to win. The easier to create good new amendments, the more it gets done, the better the people's lives are, and Congress looks great. Unanticipated consequences. If it is too easy to pass and ratify amendments to the US Constitution, some unnecessary amendments can be added. This can simply clog up the system and make the US Constitution absurdly long, just how the Texas Constitution is. The Texas Tribune explains that it is so easy to amend the Texas Constitution and that there are some unnecessary and unneeded amendments in the Texas Constitution. One amendment, for example, that is unneeded is allowing El Paso County to finance parks and recreational areas, which simply does not need to be a statewide amendment or a statewide issue. Partners in the park sounds like a great idea, but it is not important to be its own amendment. Another major consequence is that the ease of ratification of amendments can give too much power to one political party. If one party holds a strong majority in either the House or the Senate, they can basically do whatever they want and pass whatever amendments that they please. In the 40th Congress, Republicans held a 173 to 47 majority in the House. This means that Republicans with a super majority already could pass any amendment and send it to ratification. Now, of course, voters still have to vote on it and gain a majority to ratify the amendment, but it's much easier than the three-fourths state's ratification process now. This can also cause amendments that are not good for the population as a whole to get voted in on and to get ratified. People make mistakes when voting, and because only a simple majority is needed to ratify, bad amendments can get ratified. Okay, so along with the unanticipated consequences that are discussed in the previous slide, we have law of unintended consequences. So this is essentially where the actions of the government regarding change have unanticipated or unintended effects or consequences. So it's important to think about all of the effects that occur due to a change that is made within government and not just the obvious ones. 
And this is important to relate to thinking about history. So for example, in the last slide, we discussed a possible consequence is the uneven distribution of power. And that is something our country has tried to stray away from and has strayed away from. So being able to pass amendments more easily could destruct this and create this uneven distribution. So that is one unintended consequence, for example, that we need to watch out for. Okay, so lessons learned from the state legislator to the US Congress are effective ways to make and pass amendments. So these are more effectively discussed on a state level as opposed to the US level as a whole. And so the US Congress can learn from state legislators how to do this in an easier and more efficient way. And also just overall how to conduct these sessions efficiently when it comes to talking about passing a new amendment or changing or adding an amendment because there are definitely more efficient ways to do that that the US Congress gets backlash for because they don't necessarily do it as efficiently all the time in comparison to state legislator. And along with this is using time wisely during sessions. They have different lengths of sessions and different amounts of time they meet throughout the year. And so just using the time wisely to speak about amendments and have these discussions is something that state legislators tend to do better than the US Congress as a whole due to the limit, limited time. So that is also another lesson that can be learned and should be learned from state legislator. And then a big one is the effect of the votes needed, which we were talking about in our change. So the US Congress, you need three fourths of the state's votes to ratify, whereas in the Texas Congress, you need 50% of voters. And this percentage of voters needed has a big impact on whether amendments get passed or not. Okay, and then the relation to class concepts and ideas. So we have the Texas Constitution versus the US Constitution. So states hold different rights compared to the federal government due to what is written in the US Constitution, and therefore the state's constitutions can go more into detail and depth about those different rights. And it's also up to each state what they do with those. And so we spoke a lot about that in class and that's important to connect to this. And then also just the state legislator versus the US Congress. Like I just discussed before, it's the votes needed to pass the length of the sessions and how often they meet during the year, which plays a big role in what gets passed and what gets discussed. And then in turn, who will get voted in again, who gets what accomplished and what happens in the session after that. And then here we just have our references.